Yes guys, welcome back to another video on the channel today. Today we're back with another video talking of course on Wrexham AFC today. We've got a range of topics to be talking about, positive news, negative news and of course we know what's happened recently with the results of Wrexham AFC. We're going to be talking about it today so strap in, this is going to be an interesting video. Before we get going in today's video, make sure to get down there and click the red subscribe button if you are new and looking for all the best Wrexham AFC content on YouTube this is the place to be. We're going for 25,000 subscribers. So like I said, if you're new, get down there, support the channel. Of course, if you want to join as a member, first link in the description down below, you can check out all the cool perks. And without further ado, let's get talking about the first topic, which is Wrexham AFC have announced we will be doing another USA tour. So club announced, I think it was like a week and a half, two weeks ago now that we'll be heading back to the USA for a pre-season tour with the club announcing our first fixture against Chelsea Premier League side Chelsea we played them last year we lost 5-0 but we saw it was a huge turnout Wrexham AFC will be playing Chelsea at Levi Stadium home with the San Francisco 49ers in the NFL in Santa Clara on the 24th of July so if you're in and around the area on that day and you've got nothing to do get down to the Levi Stadium and go and watch the Mighty Reds. So first of all, the first thing I really do want to say on this is I hope and I believe this will be our last game of the pre-season tour because as we saw last year, there was just seven days between our last game in the USA and our first game in League Two. Seven days is not a lot of time for recovery and that really did show in the first opening games of the season. We left it a bit late, so I'm hoping this year it will be our final game. So that will, of course, leave us with a larger gap between, you know, coming back from the States and starting, hopefully, our League One season. Let's hope we've got enough recovery period time in between then, of course, to get our final bits of training in before the season and, of course, recovering from probably a lot of players will have jet lag and, you know, just getting used to the conditions again from out in the States compared to back over here. You know, we had no time to recover from what previously happened and, of course, it had an impact on the season, so I'm sure they'll have thought this through. Humphrey Kerr did say that, you know, they've planned everything out this year for the United States tour. So, like I said, I think it's a good decision that we've decided to take on Chelsea again. As we saw last summer, it was a very, very highly attended game. 50,596 with their in attendance. And, you know, to have it being played at a larger stadium, they're obviously anticipating it to be possibly a larger crowd than last time Chelsea of course I'm sure they've got a big following in the United States like every other big Premier League team does but Wrexham let's see how many fans we can see wearing red in the stadium on that day of course it was fairly balanced last year when we did take on Chelsea so let's hope this year that it can be another big game and of course good for our players get that experience of playing against some really really big name players last year it was a very highly attended game but this year we're playing 41 hours across the other side of America. Will that have an effect on the attendance? There's every bit of chance that it will do. But yeah, on the topic of playing them, you know, 24th of July, it was towards the end of pre-season and we'll hopefully have learned from our mistakes last year, of course. I've already been through them again. Hopefully this state's tour will go down another huge success like it was last year. If we're talking about who we're playing, I couldn't really give you any names. Manchester United could be on the cards again will most likely face another MLS second team, which, you know, I think was good last year to get that experience in. And it was easier for the fans that couldn't maybe get tickets for the bigger games to go and attend. So, yeah, I think we're looking at definitely an MLS team and maybe another big Premier League team. Hopefully we can broaden out and expand to see if we can maybe take on another European giant. But from a financial viewpoint, this ticks all the boxes for Wrexham AFC and obviously it brings more exposure to Wrexham AFC around different areas of the USA. So it looks like we're sort of going in different patterns all across the states to of course grow the brand and the exposure of Wrexham AFC. And one slight thing that I do want to talk about this is incredible. What is happening at Wrexham AFC in the United States, you know, getting a big image brand across the whole of the world. You know, Wrexham AFC is that club that is being talked about across the world at the minute due to our, of course, big ownership documentary and our recent success. But I just hope we don't become too sort of big for our boots, if that's a saying. You expect to see this type of stuff happen with, you know, Manchester United, Chelsea, all the big clubs around the world. But Wrexham, we can't really forget that we're a League Two club. And, you know, although we're a massive draw, we can't forget, you know, the local teams that we played against in pre-season a few years back, you know, that offered out to help Wrexham OFC play the friendlies in pre-season. Of course, we could have played some bigger teams, but, you know, we used to help out the smaller teams. There'd be a whole host of Wrexham OFC fans in attendance. I'm sure with increased crowds of Wrexham OFC getting at the minute, we could surely chip in and help these teams 
hopefully play a couple of pre-season friendlies here and there. And of course, another factor is a lot of Wrexham fans don't have the money to spend, you know, watching us play halfway across the other side of the world. So friendlies at home, you know, in and around the local area would not go amiss. So overall, I'm happy with this. I'm not going to moan too much. You know, this is stuff we didn't even think would be possible a couple of years ago when we were struggling in the National League. So to see all the rise and teams that we've been able to play against at the minute, it's absolutely fantastic. And I'm just hoping we can play Arsenal. I've been an Arsenal fan for years and years now, so I'm hoping that my two clubs can sort of come together and play each other. That would be absolutely incredible. And the whole point of the title and the video was, of course, talking about this one topic that I've got completely sidetracked by a recent form and how we could get promoted. I've just completely forgot to talk about this, but having previously just talked about the topic of Rex AFC men's going back for their second USA tour, Wrexham women's will be heading out to the USA for the first time, I think, in the club's history that Wrexham AFC women's will have set foot in another country, especially the USA as well. So that's thanks to Ali as well. They've made this all possible for the women's team to travel out to the States, which, you know, is absolutely incredible. There'll be games to be revealed very, very soon. They've said they're going to be a number of competitive games for the women's team. So it's incredible. They're doing it for the men's and the women's team as well. So it's crazy crazy how much ryan and rob are invested into improving not only the men's team but the women's teams you've just got to give a round of applause for what they have done for this 2024 usa tour so yeah moving on to another topic i wanted to talk about of course we've seen the 0-0 draw with harrogate we've seen the 1-0 loss at tram but i think we're kind of forgetting our big 3-1 away win versus morecambe now i was meant to record this video a couple of days ago before the results of harrogate and tram but i just wanted to focus on this game because i think this was a really really big hopefully turning point in our way form as well to give us that confidence going into these two next away games at Grimsby who you know we have a bad history of performing at Doncaster they're going to be no pushovers you know McLean popping up with a goal and an assist in that game and of course what followed against Harrogate was bitterly disappointing because I think he'd have been a very very key player to have in that game against Tranmere Rovers but we sort of missed him in that game we missed his passion we missed his love for the big games and McLean is really thriving in that midfield role since being called upon now two goals two assists in five games since he's been playing in midfield and a real threat when it comes to scoring goals and of course another threat is the Mullen and Palmer striker partnership that we've recently reverted back to just one of the reasons why we play so well when these two are together is because they've played together for nearly two years now a bit more on this partnership seven goals scored in seven games prior to Mullen and Palmer starting up top together in the last three, seven goals scored, four goals and two assists for Mullin and an average rating of just above seven for Oli Palmer. So Paul Mullin becomes such a better player when he's accompanied by Oli Palmer up top. And I think, you know, Harrogate was just a blip. We struggled to break them down defensively. They were solid. And of course, it just wasn't their day. Palmer having a really good chance. And I strongly believe Phil Parkinson will hopefully keep with these two up top from now until the end of the year. We experimented going back with Mullin and Fletcher up top against Tranmere and I think it's fair to say Fletcher is a player you need to bring on when you're chasing a goal, when you're needing to get back into the game. Starting, he does a really good job and I think he's an incredible, incredible player but you want to start a game with your strongest partnership and that is Mullin and Palmer at the minute. I'm all for him trying new things but I think we've seen it before and that sort of just does tell us now that it needs to be Paul Mullen and Ollie Palmer in the running in the last, I think it's seven, eight games now. They bring the best out of each other, they guarantee goals, they work well as a partnership and of course it just helps the whole team and most importantly the attack as well. And of course, like I said, we've got two massive, massive away games coming up. Grimsby Town away. We've struggled at them. I can't remember off the top of my head the last time that we went to Blundell Park and picked up three points it's been that long and of course Doncaster it seems as if Doncaster are just there to make us absolutely cock up I'm hoping that isn't the case if we can get a win away at Grimsby happy happy days if we can get a win away at Doncaster we are more than looking at getting automatic promotion it's there for the taking these two results we've had in the past week they were absolutely shocking zero goals at home this is not like Rex AFC it's uncharacteristic but we can put that aside if we go out and get six points in our next two away games if we're not looking at any points in these two away games I think promotion might be off. MK Dons will be looking to exploit the situation. Crew Alexander, we've still got them to play. We've still got Stockport to play. 
they'll be looking at exploiting our current form. Zero wins out of our last two home games. They'll be licking their lips. They'll be thinking that they can capitalise on this and get automatic promotion. That spot for third and second is going to heat up massively. And if Rex Mercy want to be in that top three come the end of the year, it needs to start now and it needs to start with six points in our next two away games. If we're failing to pick up these six points, then I don't think it's the sign that we are going to go up automatically. We might go up via the playoffs, but we want to save that hassle. We should be looking at a win away at Grimsby. They're fighting for their lives at the bottom of the table. Doncaster, you know, they've not really got anything to play for. We've got a better squad. We've got players coming back from injury. We are more than capable of going up this season. And I strongly, strongly believe we can do it if we kickstart this final, you know, put everything aside that's just happened. This is the eight games. This is like an eight game mini league that we need to be going for. We need to be attacking it with confidence. We've got a load of home games coming up as well. We need to make the race course ground rocking. We need to get it, you know, we need to get behind the plays and we need to make it a fortress for away teams to come to, you know. We've got some very, very winnable games coming up at home. Crawley, I know they're doing well, but, you know, I fancy them at home to us. Forest Green, they've turned a bit of form recently. I fancy us against them. And we just turn up for the big home games as well. Stockport, we've got a good home record against them. I think we can beat them. I genuinely do think we can beat them. Mansfield is the one that's sticking out for me. But, you know, you might think I'm a bit deluded after seeing the 1-0 loss at home to Tranmere and the 1-0 loss at Bradford, 0-0 against Harrogate. I still don't fear the big teams in this league and I have so much confidence that with a good atmosphere behind us, the players are reared up to go, I think we can do this and I think we can definitely beat the teams that are above us in the table but this is all dependent on our running now and it starts like I said with our two games next week away at Doncaster and away at Grimsby Town. So yeah, I'm sure you've been wanting to hear this from me, Wrexham nil, Tranmere Rovers 1. Now, yeah, um, where do you really start with this? A lot of anticipation going into this game. We've had our derby away at them early on in the season. We've had our derby away at Shrewsbury. I can't lie, before this game kicked off, losing wasn't really an option for me and other Wrexham OC fans. You know, you expected them to turn up with fireworks. You expected them to come out with a really blistering performance. But... You know, we had a spell in the first half, but apart from that, we were not at the races at all. Anger, I think, is the right word to describe watching that performance. Players just weren't doing their jobs. They weren't tracking back. They weren't, you know, playing as if they were in the derby. This meant a lot to us, Wrexham OC fans. We wanted to win this game. These are our rivals. These are the only rivals we've really got in this league in league two so we want to go out there we wanted to make it a really good performance and get a big three points but it was just yeah players not tracking back players just not putting 100 percent in yeah very very disappointing you know we shouldn't really be looking back now we should be looking forward to these games we need to put it right against grimsby by no means is it going to be easy but it's a game that we could be winning a game that we should be winning we've got the quality if we turn up and if we're on our game first 10 minutes if we can hopefully get a goal maybe and make it our game make them chase the lead and make us you know play with confidence like we have been the majority of this season you know it's typical Wrexham you look at the stats and you think 25 shots surely Wrexham actually score but when you look further into them only four on target we were poor in front of goal I don't think we had you know one or two clear-cut chances that you know could have got us in the game Tranmere Rovers scored and then I think fair play to them they defended really really well they've got something good going under Nigel Arkins he's an experienced manager and he knew how to see that game out despite the pressure that Wrexham AFC did put on not really the performance that you need when you turn up to a derby day so yeah we can hopefully forget this horrific derby defeat to Tranmere by picking up three points and hopefully even more six points in our next two league games. So the final bit of news that I do want to talk about, Wrexham Reserves had a friendly behind closed doors at the racecourse ground against Salford City Reserves, a lineup that was very, very strong. And I've got the lineup in front of me here. It was followed Howard, Hayden, Tozer, Tunnycliffe, Ashfield, Jordan Davis, Tom O'Connor, James McLean, Callum McFadden, Marriott, and Dolby so 10 out of 11 of those have played a big part in the past few years at Wrexham AFC are you shocked that we won 7-1 you know we can expect that this was a very weak Salford City team you know they might not have had no first team as it was probably consistent of under 21s under 18s but 
this is a good opportunity for the Wrexham players to you know get back fit if they're struggling from injury get valuable game time ahead of an important part towards the end of the year hat trick for Jack Marriott a double for Sam Dolby a Jordan Tunnicliffe goal and a Jordan Davis goal at the race course ground Wrexham obviously won 7-1 like I said Jack Marriott getting a hat trick that will hopefully do him the world of good he wasn't in the squad for Tramby Rovers whether that was injury related fitness related or not he has got a hat trick behind him in a friendly that would hopefully do him the world of good, bring his confidence into Saturday's game against Grimsby Town where we're expecting him to be in the squad and of course Dolby getting a double as well. This is just good for the players you know, that aren't getting the regular game time to sort of just show what they're worth to Phil Parkinson, hopefully push on and you know we might see some of these have a big impact in the team in the final stage of the season. So yeah, a 7-1 win behind closed doors friendly against Salford City and a good opportunity for those sporadic squad players to get some minutes behind them so yeah that is it for today's video if you enjoyed make sure to drop a like let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the usa tour let me know how many points you think we'll pick up over our next two away games and of course i just like hearing your thoughts on anything in the comment section down below until the next video take care guys and let's keep our fingers crossed that this will be the year for rex and oc